Before talking about fluid properties, I need to define units and dimensions for you. Dimensions describe what is getting measured. So dimensions tell you what is going to be measured. Units, they describe the method by which you can measure the dimensions. So they tell you how you can measure it. So dimensions tell you what is being measured and units tell you how you can measure it, the method, right? Let me give you an example. For example, uh, length, mass, and time. If I ask you what are these, are they units or are they dimensions? You're going to tell me that these are dimensions. Why? Because these are the things that we measure, right? These are the things that we measure, all right? In SI, International System of Units, length is measured by meter. How about mass? Mass is measured by kilogram. And how about time? Time is measured by second. This is the system of units that allow us to measure these dimensions that I have written over here. Now, we can have different system of units as well. For example, in United States, customary system of units, length is measured by foot. Mass is measured by slug. And time is the same thing, is measured by second. All right, so I'm hoping that the difference between dimensions and units is very clear for you right now. Dimensions tell you what is being measured and units tell you um, how it's getting measured or the method that is getting measured. Another thing that I want you to know is that each of these dimensions are represented using a capital English letter. For example, length can be re represented by capital L. Mass is represented by capital M and time is represented by capital T. So this will help us to simplify when we are writing different dimensions. Now I'm going to talk, talk about two different types of dimensions. Scientists and engineers, they use a set, a limited set of dimensions to derive, to write other dimensions based off those. Those dimensions are called primary dimensions. You might ask, what are primary dimensions? I have three of them listed for you over here. So length, mass, and time are primary dimensions. What are others? Temperature is another primary dimension. And the symbol for that is usually theta. What else? Electrical current is another uh, primary dimension. Uh, amount of light is another primary dimension. And the last one is the amount of matter. In fluid mechanics, we are going to use these four. So I'm not going to write the electrical and the amount of light and the amount of matter over here. These are called um, primary dimensions. Any other dimensions can be derived based on these dimensions that I have written over here and some of them I have not written over here. So those dimensions that can be derived based on these, based on primary dimensions, are called secondary dimensions. Let me give you an example for secondary dimensions. Force is a secondary dimension, which means we can, we are able to derive force based on the list of primary dimensions that we have over here. Let's see how we do that. Okay, so force is equal to mass times acceleration. This equation should be very familiar to you. Okay, so now I want to write the dimensions of these. So in order to write the dimensions, what I usually do, I put, I put every item over here in square brackets. 
Square bracket means dimension of. So I have square brackets around force means, it means that I want to find uh, the dimensions of force or capital F. In order to do that, I need to find the dimensions of mass times acceleration, right? It's pretty easy to do. Okay, so what would be the dimension of mass? It's capital M. Acceleration. Is acceleration over here? No. But can I write acceleration in terms of length and time? I can. Going back to physics, the definition of acceleration is length divided by time squared, right? Okay, so length divided by time squared. It would be length divided by time squared. All right, so I can write this. I'm going to write it over here. M L divided by t to the power 2. This is essentially the same thing as the dimension of force. So now what I have done is that I know that force is a secondary dimension. I have written force in terms of the primary dimensions. So the difference between these two again is that we have a limited set of dimensions that I told you about length, mass, time, temperature, electrical current, amount of light, and amount of matter. These are our primary dimensions. We can write every other dimension, such as force, in terms of the primary dimensions. And the last thing that I want to talk about is dimensional homogeneity. We call an equation dimensionally homogeneous when every single term in that equation has the same primary dimensions. What does that mean? Let me tell you. I'm going to write a specific form of energy equation for you over here um, that we are going to learn about this specific form later. So the energy hat, we usually show it by capital H, is equal to the summation of elevation hat that we usually show by a little z plus pressure head, which is pressure divided by gamma, and gamma is specific weight. And last term is velocity head, which is velocity to the power 2 divided by 2 times g. Um, you don't need to understand this equation right now. We're going to talk about this equation in length. Right now, I'm just going to show you that this equation is um, dimensionally homogeneous. How am I going to do that? By writing exactly the process that I did over here by writing its dimensions. So uh, let's start from the left-hand side. So I'm going to write the dimensions of the left-hand side. This is the energy head, and energy head is normally represented in uh, units of length. So this would be L or units of length. Now, if this equation is dimensionally homogeneous, uh, what it means is that every single term in this equation should have the dimension of L. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to write the, dimen the dimensions of Z, the dimensions of pressure divided by specific weight, and the dimensions of um, velocity head or velocity to the power 2 divided by 2G. Z is easy. Elevation can be expressed with the units of what? Meters or a foot. And that means that the dimension for that is L. So Z, it's easy, has, we already know that has um, uh, the dimension of L. But how about pressure divided by gamma? Let's talk about that. Let me sit over here and talk about that. Okay, so pressure divided by gamma, I'm going to write the dimensions for that. Um, if I ask you what is the definition of pressure, you're going to tell me that pressure is force divided by area. So this pressure over here is force divided by area. Now, what would be the dimensions, uh, primary dimensions of force? We derive that right over here. It's ML divided by uh, T squared, right? How about the dimensions of area? Area, think about the units for area. It is meters squared or foot squared, right? So it would be L to the power 2, right? Okay, so if I want to write that, it would be in the numerator, I'll have force, and force is mLt to the power negative 2, divided by area, 
and area is L to the power 2. Okay, so this would be how I write dimensions of pressure. Gamma, gamma you don't know about it yet, but you're going to learn about it. Gamma is a weight divided by volume. So weight is, again, same thing as force, so it would be MLT to the power negative 2 divided by volume. Volume, what are the units for volume? Cubic meters or cubic feet, right? So it would be L to the power 3, length to the power 3. All right, this will cancel with this one, and this will cancel with this one. So what we will have over here is eventually L. So you can see that this term also has a dimension of L. Now let's talk about the last term, velocity to the power 2 divided by 2G. Velocity to the power 2 divided by 2G. Okay, so velocity to the power 2. What is the definition of velocity? Distance divided by time. So distance, L, to the power 2, because this has a power 2, div divided by time, T to the power 2. And 2 is a constant, doesn't have any dimensions. G, G is the acceleration due to gravity, right? And the acceleration, we already know that is length, divided by t to the power 2, so length divided by t to the power 2. This will be canceled with this one, and this will be canceled with this, so I have L again. So this third term over here has the dimension of length 2. So now I can tell that this equation is dimensionally homogeneous. Why? Because take a look at every single term in this equation. H has the dimension of L, Z has, has the dimension of L, Pressure head has a dimension of L, and velocity head has the dimension of L. So I can conclude that this equation is dimensionally homogeneous. And this is uh, my introduction to units and dimensions for you.